Roosevelt, whose family had been New York bankers since the 18th century, whose uncle Frederick was on the original Federal Reserve Board, was very sympathetic to the interests of the international bankers. And the interest was to enter the war, as as we've seen, nothing is more profitable for international bankers than war. In a journal entry by Roosevelt's Secretary of War, Henry Stinson, dated November 25, 1941, he documented a conversation he had with Roosevelt. The question was, how should we maneuver them into firing the first shot? It was desirable to make sure the Japanese be the ones to do this, so that there should remain no doubt as to who were the aggressors. In the months leading up to the attack on Pearl Harbor, Roosevelt had done almost everything in his power to anger the Japanese, showing a posture of aggression. He halted all of Japan's imports of American petroleum. He froze all the Japanese assets in the United States. He made public loans to nationalist China and supplied military aid to the British, both enemies of Japan in the war, which, by the way, is completely in violation of international war rules. And on December 4th, three days before the attack, Australian intelligence told Roosevelt about a Japanese task force moving towards Pearl Harbor. Roosevelt ignored it. So, as hoped and allowed, on December 7, 1941, Japan attacked Pearl Harbor, killing 2,400 soldiers. Before Pearl Harbor, 83% of the American public wanted nothing to do with the war. After Pearl Harbor, one million men volunteered for the war. It is important to note, Nazi Germany's war effort was largely supported by two organizations, one of which was called IG Farben. IG Farben produced 84% of Germany's explosives and even the Zyklon B used in the concentration camps to kill millions. One of the unspoken partners of IG Farben was J.D. Rockefeller's Standard Oil Company in America. In fact, the German Air Force could not operate without a special additive patented by Rockefeller's Standard Oil. The drastic bombing of London by Nazi Germany, for example, was made possible by a $20 million sale of fuel to IG Farben by the Rockefeller Standard Oil Company. This is just one small point on the topic of how American business funded both sides of World War II. One other treasonous organization worth mentioning is the Union Banking Corporation of New York City. Not only did it finance numerous aspects of Hitler's rise to power, along with actual materials during the war, it was also a Nazi money laundering bank, which was eventually exposed for having millions of dollars of Nazi money in its vaults. The Union Banking Corporation of New York was eventually seized for violations of the Trading with the Enemy Act. Guess who the director and vice president of the Union Bank was? Prescott Bush, our current president's grandfather, and of course our former president's father. Keep that in mind when considering the moral and political dispositions of the Bush family. Vietnam. The United States official declaration of war in North Vietnam in 1964 came after an alleged incident involving two U.S. destroyers being attacked by North Vietnamese PT boats in the Gulf of Tonkin. This was known as the Gulf of Tonkin incident. This single situation was the catalytic pretext for massive troop deployment and full-fledged warfare. One problem, however, the attack on the U.S. destroyers by Vietnamese PT boats never happened. It was a completely staged event to have an excuse to enter the war. Former Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara stated years later that the Gulf of Tonkin incident was a mistake, while many other insiders and officers have come forward, relaying that it was a contrived farce, a complete lie. Once in the war, it was business as usual. In October 1966, President Lyndon Johnson lifted trade restrictions on the Soviet bloc, knowing full well that the Soviets were providing upwards of 80% of North Vietnam's war supplies. Consequently, Rockefeller interests financed factories in the Soviet Union, which the Soviets used to manufacture military equipment and send it to North Vietnam. However, the funding of both sides of this conflict was only one side of the coin. In 1985, Vietnam's rules of engagement were declassified. This detailed what American troops were and were not allowed to do in the war. It included absurdities like North Vietnamese anti-aircraft missile systems could not be bombed until they were known to be fully operational. No enemy could be pursued once they crossed the border of Laos or Cambodia. And most revealing of all, the most critical strategic targets were not allowed to be attacked unless initiated by high military officials. Apart from these imposed ludicrous limitations, North Vietnam was informed of these restrictions and therefore could base entire strategies around the limitations of the American forces. This is why the war went on so long. And the bottom line is this. 
the Vietnam War was never meant to be won, just sustained. This war for profit resulted in 58,000 American deaths and 3 million dead Vietnamese. So, where are we now? September 11th was the jump start for what is now an accelerated agenda by the ruthless elite. It was a staged war pretext no different than the sinking of the Lusitania, the provoking of Pearl Harbor, and the Gulf of Tonkin lie. In fact, if 9-11 wasn't a planned war pretext, it would be an exception to the rule. It has been used to launch two unprovoked illegal wars, one against Iraq and one against Afghanistan. However, 9-11 was a pretext for another war as well, the war against you. The Patriot Act, Homeland Security, the Military Tribunals Act, and other legislations are all completely and entirely designed to destroy your civil liberties and limit your ability to fight back against what is coming. Currently in the United States, unannounced to most brainwashed Americans, your home can be searched without a warrant, without you being home. You can in turn be arrested with no charges revealed to you, detained indefinitely with no access to a lawyer, and legally tortured all under the suspicion that you might be a terrorist. If you need a painted picture of what is happening in this country, let's recognize how history repeats itself. In February 1933, Hitler staged a false flag attack, burning down his own German parliament building, the Reichstag, and blamed it on communist terrorists. Within the next few weeks, he passed the Enabling Act, which completely eradicated the German constitution, destroying people's liberties. He then led a series of preemptive wars, all justified to the German people as necessary to maintaining homeland security. It's time to wake up. The people in power go out of their way to make sure that you are perpetually misled and manipulated. The majority's perception of reality, especially in the political arena, is not their own. It is shrewdly imposed upon them without them even knowing it. For example, the public at large actually believes the invasion of Iraq is going badly as sectarian violence doesn't seem to stop. What the public fails to see is that the destabilization of Iraq is exactly what the people behind the government want. This war is to be sustained so the region can be divided up, domination of the oil maintained, continual profits reaped for the defense contractors, and most importantly, permanent military bases established to be used as a launching pad against other oil-bearing, non-conforming countries such as Iran and Syria. For further implication that the civil war and destabilization is purely intentional, in 2005, two elite British SAS officers were arrested by Iraqi police after being caught driving around in their car shooting at civilians while dressed up as Arabs. After being arrested and taken to a jail in Basra, the British army immediately requested the release of these men. When the Basra government refused, British tanks came in and physically broke out the men from the Basra prison. If you wish to destroy an area, how do you do it? Well, there are two ways. You can go in there and bomb it and so forth, but that is not very efficient. What you do is you try to get the people in that area to kill each other and to destroy their own territory, their own farms. And that's what's been done in that area. The way in which you destroy an opponent is get him to destroy himself by dividing his ranks against one another. And then you feed both sides. You have agents feeding both sides, inflaming both sides, and they kill each other off. And it's time that some of us woke up to this reality to understand that people who try to maintain empires and create empires do it by manipulating the people they're trying